So as you can see, we've now moved from Silo into Maya. We've brought in our two main versions of the model. We have our low resolution model here, which we've gone through and we've optimized. And I've placed these into layers. And we also have the high resolution version. And these, this is just press three and it smooth meshes it. And all that's doing is it's Maya's version of subdivision surfaces. So it's just giving it the impression of being smooth. It's not actually adding any more geometry into the model. So if we go back to our lower resolution version, we'll just have a quick look at some of the optimization I've done so far. I just press control space just to bring that up to full screen so we can have a closer look. So you can see we have the shirt, we have his poncho, and these are all separate elements at the moment. They've all been optimized down. You can see here we've got less geometry in the arm. We've kept these in uh, these polygons here over the knuckles, which make it better for when it's bending. And if I say we select the shirt and I just isolate that model, you can see how I've removed everything underneath because this is where the poncho uh, begins here. So there's no point having that geometry under there because you will never see it and when it comes to rigging the model you'll end up with the poncho going in and out of the chest polygons here they'll pop through and it'll just look a complete mess now if the poncho for example was to flap around this top layer was was separate to the bottom and they were both to flap around separately then you would keep the bottom of the uh, well, the underneath area of this shirt in there because then you'd see it. So you just have to judge what you're going to see, what you're not going to see. If you don't see it or you don't need it, get rid of it. And again, with the poncho, this has been welded together here with all the geometry between them removed. And the same has happened with everything else. The lower legs, his bandana, his head. So it's really stripped down to the bare bones. But now we need to go in and refine it a bit more. And by refining, I mean we need to make sure that there's enough geometry in there to get rid of any extremely angular areas or for when we bake out the normal map, the normal map looks its best. So let's go back to the shirt and use this as an example. Now the bottom here is quite angular, but what we can do is just bake out a normal map onto this and just see how it's going to look. So first of all I'm going to assign a blin and that's going to make it shiny and that will help to show up the normal map. Just close that down. I'm going to go to lighting shading transfer maps and that brings up this window. Now you're going to use this a lot later on in the tutorial mainly to build that bake out your normal maps but because our main high resolution model is coloured, we can also bake out the diffuse map. So you'll need to remember that later when you come to when you've UV'd your model and you come to bake out your final maps. So for this we're just going to select the shirt and that's going to be our target mesh that we're baking onto. If I open up the outliner like so, you can see I've put them into groups and named them appropriately. So shirt low is our target mesh so we need to find our shirt high which is a high resolution model add that into there we can close that down now we can assign it to the assigned shader so it will just assign it to this blin we will up the resolution uh, maybe 1024 we can just set that to preview leave everything else as it is now we need to tell it what maps to bake so for now we're just going to bake out a normal map but like I say later on when we've done the UV in and you come back to doing your normal maps also do a diffuse map which will just give you that colour information as well so we're just going to keep it as the default file name because this is just a temporary map just for us to test so that is fine so I'm just going to Right, 
just minimize that for a second. So this is what we're baking onto. Let's just have a quick look at the shirt that we're baking from. Now the problem is, Maya will treat this, even though we've applied a smooth mesh, Maya will still treat it like a low resolution model. So what we need to do is just go in and do a quick mesh smooth. Now that's baking that smooth into the model. If you don't do that, then it'll just bake out the low resolution version in the normal map and it won't look right. Let's go back to our low mesh and what I'll do is I will just isolate that so we can see what we end up with. Now this currently has no UVs on it because it's come straight from silo and we've done no UV work. Now we're not going to spend and waste time applying proper UVs just yet because we may edit the bottom of this model. Instead, I'm just going to go to Create UVs, Automatic Mapping. And that's all we, all we need for now. So now let's press Bake. Let Maya work its magic. And that is done. Make sure high quality rendering is on. And also hardware texturing is on. And there you can see we've got our normal map applied. And you need to go through each object and do this for every one. We'll just minimize this while we have a look. So looking at this, now you see we've got a problem there where I've accidentally left a part of the hand model in there, so that needs stripping out. But as we rotate around this model, we can just check, particularly this area here, and it does look too angular to benefit from that normal map. So now we've tested it, we can just go in and we can build in some more geometry in here. So just using the split polygon tool, I'm just going to go in and add in a few quick splits. Now obviously you can take a bit more time over this and you'll need to do it on both sides of the model. Make sure you don't edit this bit in here where you've already lined up and welded it with the legs. So again, we're just going through, just adding in a bit of geometry, just to allow us to soften this edge. So again, we'll soften those normals, like so. And then we can go in, we'll just select these edges here, move them up slightly just to round that off a bit better, make sure they rounded this way too. Now it's only a subtle change, but it's going to make all the difference. Now if we bring back our transfer maps, because we've already got it on a signed shader, we can just press bake again and it will go through it again, recalculate those normals. And as you can see, it's rounded that off and that looks much better than it did before. Now if you want to be and make sure that that edge is spot on with the high resolution model. What we can do is bring back both, like so. We'll just isolate those two. I'll set this layer to a template. And as we can see there, we're slightly off. It's just outside the model a bit. But this is what I mean, you can take a bit more care over it. This is just a, a basic demonstration to just show you what you need to be doing. So we'll just move that in, move that down, just so it's closer to the geometry. Something like that, that'll do. Then we can hide that again, turn on high quality rendering, and then we can bake out another map. Again, just overwriting that temporary texture, and that's fixed that. So from a distance, which is what we will be looking at in-game, that looks a lot smoother and a lot rounder. Now the other side we didn't do, which but we should have done, but it gives us a chance to highlight the differences. As you can see, this looks quite angular here. Go around to the other side, and that's nice and smooth. So this is the stage that you're at now. Just go through every model, just quickly 
apply automatic mapping, bake out a basic normal map and just look around the mesh and just see where you can benefit from a few extra polygons and while you're at it why not look while you're inspecting each model look see if there's any more that you can chop out and obviously check for any areas errors like here where I've accidentally left those hand polygons on there which I'm sure if we look at the hand yep been a bit too excited with my extracting and I've chopped it off by the back of there but doing this has just allowed us to find that error and then now we can fix it and we get a nice preview of what the normal maps are going to look like when they're applied to the mesh so that's that stage to go through now um, I'll leave you with that to go through the rest of the model uh, just refine it optimize it further just get it down to the, the the bare bones what I would suggest is to leave the hair model now I've tried a few approaches to the hair uh, I tried baking out normal maps um, creating one solid seamless mesh from the hair but they all came with problems when it came to actually baking the normal map so what I would do is just ignore the hair for now we've got our low resolution model which we're going to work from um, and we'll talk more about that in the next video where we start to look at applying our final set of UVs.